And here we go, here we go. All right, just diving right into the studio today. I filmed like a couple clips in the gym, but there's only so much cross training that I can film. And it was a harder day mentally in the gym. I'm just, you know, being transparent, the highs and the lows on this daily vlog. One second, I'm a little thirsty, hold on. <clears throat> Basically, I've been striving today to set up an MRI we finally got it done, but it, you know, it was a little bit of a challenge trying to, basically I had to call the doctor and call the, the imagery uh, spot who's gonna take the pictures for my foot. We're making progress though. So Saturday morning, 8.30 a.m. my time, I'll be getting pictures taken on my foot for an MRI and we'll be able to get a little more information. And the reason uh, I didn't think of this 10 days ago, I should have thought of this, but the Cleveland uh, plane tickets are purchased already. And so if I know it's a stress fracture, we can basically cancel our plane tickets immediately and uh, move on to plan B, plan C, and so forth. Therefore, anyway, I, hadn't, I didn't even think of that 10 days ago. So anyway, the doctor said, okay, we'll get you an MRI as soon as possible. So that's happening. And today we are diving into your running questions. That's right. If you haven't connected yet on Strava or on Instagram, both of the links are down below. Those are probably the two best places to connect with me. I also am very active on Twitter. Um, anyway, so you can send me questions through Instagram and Strava, and I will do my best to answer in a timely manner. You can also email me, but the emails get, <laughs> they get jumbled with all the other emails. So anyway, all right, moving on to the Hoka Carbon X. That's right, you probably wondered why that is in the title of this vlog. Basically, tomorrow, Saturday, May 4th, Hoka is turning 10 years old, I do believe. That's what I read on the website, their 10-year anniversary. Therefore, they're launching a new shoe called the Hoka Carbon X, a new carbon fiber plate shoe from Hoka. So you guys know, you've seen me talk about the Hoka Carbon Rocket. Go check out that full review, upper right-hand corner. Uh, this is a one millimeter drop shoe right here and more of a racing shoe. Uh, I would say 10K, maybe a 10 miler, maybe half marathon, although I know a lot of people will use this for the marathon distance as well. And basically some stats on the Hoka Carbon X brand new running shoe. It's uh, just under nine ounces. 250 grams. I don't own it yet. I haven't even seen it in person, but these are stats that I'm reading on the website. It's got a 32 millimeter stack height in the heel, 27 millimeter in the forefoot. So a five millimeter drop. So that's kind of interesting. This is a carbon fiber plate shoe as well. The first from Hoka. And so now the Carbon X is the second carbon fiber plate shoe from Hoka. Fascinating to see them really push forward. So it's actually, so on, on the side of Nike, you've got the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit, you've got the Zoomfly Flyknit, and then you now you have the the Nike um, <laughs> Next Percent, all these names, the Nike Next Percent Flyknit. Uh, so Nike now has, gosh, three carbon fiber plate shoes, and Hoka has two. So bottom line is the race is on in the ki carbon fiber plate running shoe lineups. And in addition, the new Hoka Carbon X is going to cost $180. So they're not giving it away. That is for sure. Moving on to your questions here today. What are we doing? I'm answering your questions. Again, you can send them to me through Instagram and Strava. Here we go. Do you, so this is from Mark. He, he asked this, do you recommend the Nike Winflow 5? And also he's asking about the New Balance 1080 V9, which is better. So definitely, and I already replied to Mark, Mark, definitely the New Balance 1080 V9. Actually, I'm very, I'm, I'm interested in the 1080. Very interested in this ninth iteration. Uh, I might be picking that up sooner rather than later. I think it could be used for a, a long run shoe. The Winflow 5, I would put more in the category of a cross training shoe. So maybe I need to pick it up as well. It's just not... It's, it doesn't get rave reviews for running. It's more, I would put it more in the cross training category, but if you're really looking for a really affordable Nike shoe that could, you could put some minimal mileage in, yeah, you could probably get the Winflow 5. Okay, moving on to the next uh, question. This is from Manash in India. He asks, uh, hi Seth, how's your foot doing? It's doing okay. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just answer that way. Uh, hope it's recovering well and fast and want to see you lining up for Cleveland. Thank you, Manash. He also asked, wanted to know which shoe for a neutral uh, would you suggest for long runs of 18 to 22 miles? He's 5'8", 
59 kilograms. I don't know what that is exactly in pounds. Um, and he's his tempo pace is 355 per kilometer for the marathon. Um, just to specify a little bit about himself. So thank you, Minash, for that question. So I have some shoes here that I've kind of written down. Basically, of course, the Pegasus 35 Turbo is an easy answer. Uh, I It's a neutral shoe. Uh, it's got the ZoomX foam, very comfortable. I would, I would say, um, it's not my, it wouldn't be my first choice for a long run shoe, uh, but it will do the trick. I think you can use the Pegasus 35 Turbo for uh, tempo days because it is it's got that tempo feel because of that zoom x foam through the midsole uh, So anyway, that's one shoe the Saucony ride ISO lineup would be another one uh, the Brooks Adrenaline GTS 19, but it is stability So I know I forgot that you're actually looking for a neutral shoe. So that's more stability So cross that one off um, and then the New Balance 1080 V9 that I already mentioned I would put that one out there as well for you um, and then lastly, I struggled with the Vimero 14. Where is it? With the Vimero 14 from Nike because of the lacing cutting into the top of my foot right here. You can go watch my full review of the Vimero 14 upper right hand corner. Uh, so I struggled with the shoe, but I do love the ride of the Vimero 14 for a long run. I, 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 I don't know if I'm going to give this shoe another shot. Probably not. I want to though so bad because I do like the ride. So make sure, Minash, that... Uh, you don't have any issues with the lacing through the top of your foot. So those are some ideas for you for a long run day. I'm trying to think if there'd be any others that I have out here. Actually, I'll just put it out there. Yeah, the Skechers Razor 3. You could use this for a long run. I would put this more in the in the... I would put this more in the 12 to 15 mile range, but it's very lightweight, definitely a neutral shoe, um, not a lot of arch support, kind of a bare minimum if you know that you can stay healthy um, and you want to save a little money, I would say the Skechers Razor 3 could be an option for you. I actually like this shoe a lot. It's It's got some, I would say it's got some durability question marks, like the outsole is definitely wearing down for me already. But anyway, hopefully that helps you get going in the right direction, Manash. Okay, moving on to question number three. This is from uh, Do You Even Avocado? I love it. I think this is from Instagram. He said, hey Seth, I've been watching your YouTube videos and I have a question I hope you can help me with. I get sore stiff joints and over pronate slightly. I just started running 5Ks four times a week and might want to go further in the future. What shoe should I get? I have a stability trainer, but find it quite hard. So he runs in the Nike Structure 21. Was thinking of a more cushioned shoe would be better. And that is again from Do You Even Avocado. Thank you for the question. So I threw out the New Balance Vongo. I've tried the Vongo, I should also mention. I haven't tried all these shoes. I always say too many shoes, too little time. Like there's only so many shoes I can try. But I have tried the Vongo on in the store and I liked it a lot. I don't own it yet. Maybe I will at some point, but it is structure. I'm more of a neutral running shoe guy. So, uh, but I like the ride of the New Balance Vongo. And then also again, the Brooks Adrenaline GTS 19. That could be an option for you. And then also uh, from Hoka, the Gaviota and the, uh, the Hoka Bondi 6. Both stability shoes. So the Gaviota will have less uh, midsole and the Bondi 6 will have a lot of plush. Uh, if you want more cushion, the Bondi 6 will have plenty of plush cushion for you through that midsole. The Gaviota is less uh, from Hoka, but still uh, a stability shoe from Hoka. And then lastly, I wrote down the Saucony Omni ISO2, which has a little more cushion than the Liberty ISO2. Both stabilized shoes from Saucony that, again, I've held the Liberty in store and it felt good. But I'm again, I'm more of a neutral guy, so I don't have stability shoes in my lineup as much. Uh, but those are some options for you to consider. Uh, do you even avocado? One more drink here. One second. Okay, moving on to question number four from the Broski. I'm a sub on your channel, and I have seen some of your videos on injury and good shoes. I'm having some problems with my heels uh, to my Achilles tendon, and I was looking for some good shoes for walking. That's really important, actually. It's a good point. Like we runners, we think about shoes while we're running, but don't forget about taking care of your feet and your legs and your body 
when you're just walking around the other, you know, 10 hours of the day or 12 hours of the day or however long you're, you know, you know you're awake. So, and that goes for really like um, shoes that you wear to work as well. Like if you have to wear dress shoes every day, might be something to consider uh, to make sure you're not wearing dress shoes that are messing up your feet too, too much. So good point, Broski. And then he goes on to say, do you have any suggestions that would help? So I wrote down, of course, the shoe that I have on, one shoe that I have on right now. I don't think I have it. Well, uh, actually, no, I'm not going to take it off my foot because I don't want to hurt my other foot. It's the Ultra Torin 3.5. I love the Torin lineup from Ultra because it stretches out my Achilles and my soleus and my calf muscle uh, when I'm just walking around because it's a zero drop shoe. And I just love Ultra's EVA. I, here's what they have through the midsole. They have the Ultra Light EVA A-Bound Top Layer Midsole. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, the midsole for Ultra, even though it's just EVA, it feels really nice. And I don't know if that's just the density that they're creating the shoe with, but I, I love walking around in my Ultra Torin 3.5s, just so you know. Um, that's kind of my go-to walk-around shoe. If it's not that, then it's probably... Oh, well, no, it's the Torin 3, or it's probably my Hoka uh, recovery sliders, uh, those sandals that you see me in quite a bit. Uh, but I'm also, I will say right now, I'm pretty intrigued by the Ultra Paradigm 4, a, a shoe from Ultra. It's a road shoe that has a little more midsole than the, the Torin, so a little more stack height, so more cushion. As, a, as I'm dealing with this injury and I'm already plotting for the future, how can I stay healthy in the future while still keeping my volume pretty high? Um, on easy days and maybe middle distance days, I'm actually I'm really considering purchasing the Ultra Paradigm 4 for those easier days, uh, middle distance days, not long run, but middle distance days for me. So keep stay tuned. There's a good chance I will be picking up the Ultra Paradigm 5 moving forward. Okay, next question. I believe this is number five from Evan. Hey Seth, love your channel. What are your thoughts for the Carbon Rocket for a 10 mile race? I've only had a chance to get two runs in and they feel smooth at 545 pace, but uh, they feel smooth at 545 pace, but really stiff. First time with a carbon fiber plate and he's a little nervous. Evan, thank you for that question. So here you go. This is the carbon rocket. If Again, did I already mention upper right hand corner for this full review of the carbon rocket? Um, I agree. Very smooth. Um, stiff. Yeah. I could see you. I could see how you would be making that assessment, Evan. Um, definitely not as soft through the. Let's say you know compared to, to the Vaporfly, uh, it's definitely not Zumax foam. It's an EVA foam through that midsole uh, for Hoka, and they have a little bit of hard rubber here in the forefoot and the heel, which also adds to that stiffness, Evan. Uh, so I think you can. De I wrote back to Evan and said you could definitely use the carbon rocket for a 10 mile race. And Evan, I would agree with you about being a little nervous about running in a carbon fiber plate shoe too often. My thesis is that uh, in my training, I wanna run in carbon fiber plates once a month, twice a month, basically for hard threshold efforts. That's how I plan to use the Zoomfly flying it moving forward, potentially the carbon rocket, maybe the Hoka Carbon X at some point. You know, some people, train all it seems like it's crazy but some people train in the vaporfly four percent flying it every day it's insane now they have a lot of money and they can afford to buy like eight pairs of vaporflies so uh i don't know though i'm of the opinion that i like to train in shoes that are going to make me work a little harder meaning the weight is a little heavier uh doesn't have a carbon fiber plate in the shoe because then then when you put on a carbon fiber plate shoe, you're crushing it. You're just crushing it because your legs are like, oh, okay, I have a little help here. I've been training in a shoe that is heavier, doesn't have a carbon fiber plate. So anyway, Evan, that is my thesis when it comes to carbon fiber plates. And there you have it. I could talk about running shoes all night, but I'm gonna call it there. Keyword answers. I hope I provided a little bit of insight and some answers for you about running shoes. And listen, everyone's foot is different. Everyone's gait cycle is different. So you just got to get the shoe on your feet and go run. It's that simple and see how it feels. Um, but I do hope that my thoughts help at least narrow down your selection a little bit, right? There's just so many to choose from. It, it, it can be really overwhelming when you walk into a running shoe store. So anyway, I hope that gives you some insights and question of the day. If there was one 
and I'm putting you in a corner here. If there was one feature of a running shoe that you had to choose that made you purchase that shoe, what would it be? So we're talking about grip. We're talking about drop. We're talking about comfort. We're talking about uh, midsole. We're talking about the lacing system. We're talking about the tongue. Any feature of a running shoe, and I think really soon I'm going to make a video about the anatomy of a running shoe just to help you all learn a little bit more about running shoes. So anyway, if there was one feature of a running shoe that you had to choose for your purchase, um, like that is what pushed you over the edge for like, okay, I'm going to buy that shoe because of the uh, grip in the outsole, what would it be? Thanks for hitting it up down below and thanks for bearing with me. I'm going to try to keep doing this daily vlog as long as you keep watching. But again, it's getting, uh, it's, you know, it's going to be difficult moving forward without being able to go out and run and film. But if you stick with me, I'll stick with you. It's just like, oh, today was a hard day. Like, Oh, just trying to figure out what to film and uh, being mentally tough in that gym on the stationary bike. But I know you got my back and I appreciate it. So you better believe it. I will be back tomorrow. No matter what it takes, right? No matter what it takes. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Mm. We got this. We got this. Oh, up here. It's all, it's right there. It really is. It's crazy. Today was a hard day. It, it, it's there. It's there. It's there. See you tomorrow. Did I already say that?